keep your eyes closed. Ah, no peeking. Keep your eyes closed. I want you to picture a video game. This video game has loads of different play styles, weapons, and abilities. You got a perfect dodge roll with invincibility frames, intense boss battles with multiple stages, and generally, you got just like no clue what's going on at any given point or why you're doing anything. Now, what game were you picturing? Open your eyes and that's right, bucko, we're talking about the Kirby. As a kid, whenever this logo appeared on the screen before I played a video game, I knew that I was in for a great time. Super Smash Brothers, Pokemon Stadium, Earthbound, but ever since the GameCube, how laboratories have only really been making Kirby games. Like, a lot of Kirby games, holy cow. Now, I love Kirby as much as the next 31-year-old YouTuber man-child, but uh, it's certainly not a favorite of mine. I can count the amount of Kirby games I've played on one hand, and not even my hand, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle hand. Whenever I've glanced over at Kirby's massive mouthful of a library, all I see is puzzle games, weird experimental ideas, which I do gotta say, Canvas Curse was my jam, and various versions of side scrolling adventures but still to this day my favorite kirby was the very first one on the nes it stands up to the test of time and is still one of the best games on that console not that the competition was exactly steep the thing that's most impressive about Kirby's first adventure is that it was immediately quintessentially a Kirby game. The cuteness, the charm, the sucking, the abilities, the enemies. Ironic that the one video game character that actually can change its form into literally anything never needed to. It's so cool switching between this and Forgotten Land. It's just like seeing this 30 year old video game being brought to life. Speaking of Kirby being brought to life, I heard that every target dressed up those giant big red bulls out front in a Kirby outfit. That's so cute. I gotta go see it. Hey. Okay. Uh, this is where I target, right? Where's Kirby? What the heck is this? Dang it. Ugh. It's the second most disappointing balls I've seen all day. <laughs> so, about Kirby's new ability, Mouthful Mode. It's really great for... Oh, sorry, I guess I'm kind of <laughs> going full Mouthful Mode myself over here. Uh, normally, I, I wouldn't eat while making a video, of course. I do have to apologize. It's just that Factor has such delicious meals and they're so simple to cook and prepare that I, I couldn't help myself. I mean, even Kirby would swallow this entire thing whole, am I right? <laughs> Factor supports wholesome eating made simple with weekly updated menus featuring over 29 meals and over 39 add-on options. You can either choose your favorite meals or allow Factor to craft the order based on your preferences. And the best part is they have keto meals, low calorie, which is, the ones I go for, but also chef's choice, vegan and veggie options, which include seafood, meat, and plant-based meals. Although, uh, <laughs> seafood is Kirby's favorite meal since he <laughs> sees food. What do you mean that wasn't funny? There's no prep time, there's no mess. The meals are prepared in two minutes, which is way faster than cooking or ordering. I worked with Factor last month and I ended up enjoying and loving the meals so much. I ordered 18 for this month. Because they are low calorie and because they taste so good with so many different flavors and styles, it's been fantastic just throwing one in the microwave after a workout or for a quick dinner when I'm literally sat here editing all day, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. Here's what you gotta do. Head to go.factor75.com forward slash beatemups120 and use code beatemups120 to get $120 off. Speaking of someone who loves food, uh, we should probably get back to the video. After years of developing Kirby after Kirby after Kirby after Kirby after Kirby after Kirby. After Kirby.
It really feels like how Laboratories threw out all the old ideals of what makes a Kirby game and decided instead, let's just combine Mario Odyssey and Elden Ring. No! Why did it, why did it lock in a combo? It's like Elden Ring! <laughs> no, not really. It, it kind of feels just more like a proper evolution of the Kirby franchise, and it's more reminiscent to something like Mario it's 3D World or the more recent Yoshi games, except good. And for those wondering, yes, it is actually a little bit harder than Star Allies. <laughs> By a little bit more difficult, I mean, you probably can't beat this game blindfolded and using a controller that's not even turned on. Sure, the base game is fairly casual, but it's fun. And oh boy, by late game, some of those bosses and even the platforming can become quite the challenge. Had to be in under a minute. No way I didn't do it. That was perfect. I was fast. Bruh. How could I go any faster than that? Oh, oh God. Okay, this is good. This is the fastest one yet. This one's brutal. Damn it! Mm. Like, I feel like this is out of the realm of like a casual game of being able to do this. I'm like really having to push. Oh. Oh. Harder than some of the Elden Ring bosses. I don't really have anything to complain about here. I think it's the best Kirby I've ever played. But again, so maybe I'm not the person to ask. I'm pretty sure stating that this is the most refined and content-filled Kirby game so far isn't a giant vending machine-sized stretch. To me, the gameplay is Mario Odyssey reminiscent. Because at its core, it's smooth and fun with creative platforming, and it's just also fast-paced but simple. Each world has a very different and unique visual style. The game is absolutely gorgeous and easily one of the best-looking games on the console. Every level feels completely different. Unlike my YouTube channel, the game never repeats the same idea twice. Unless, you know, it's adding to the idea it had, but in a way that makes it feel fresh. There's a ton of fun and unique copy abilities and they each have different attacks depending if you're on the ground or in the air. There's different attack moves if you're just chaining combos or holding the attack button. Some even have shields and special blocking abilities. And all of that is before you even start finding all the blueprints. Each one can be upgraded a couple of times and it's not just basic stat increases. No, it completely morphs the ability into a wacky new version that acts completely differently and it's great. Finally, with the main campaign and the challenge levels and then even the post-game content, this game can take around 15 hours to finish and that's even if you're not going for a completion rating. So I think that's a great length for a Kirby game. Not to mention all of that is before before you even start spending some time in the Waddle D town. Fishing, boss rush, battling, fishing, gotcha capturing, bull balancing, fishing, serving food, and finally, did I mention big goldfish fishing? The game is just so cute, pretty, and fun. It's a nice time, and I think they did a great job with it. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with Kirby next, and I think you can finally slap a label of Kirby fan right on my chest. Okay. But here is where things get wild. I need to address the giant pink car in the room. Kirby and the Forgotten Land doesn't tell you where or when the story is set. So I can only assume it's in an alternate timeline after the fallout of Smash Brothers and everything has just gone to sh**. So now Kirby's out here all alone just trying to become the new very best Pokemon trainer in all the land. Other than that, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme, reason, or purpose for anything that's happening. Is it just me, or is this game, like, super random? Which is, like, fine, but, like, all of a sudden, we're just fighting this random duck ballerina called Florina. Like, where did this come from? Like, nothing has really been explained. As a non-Kirby fan... I wasn't really sure what was going on. At some point, I just accepted that it was what it was. And it's not like not having a story affected how fun the game was. And I thought that was that. But then, Kirby and the Forgotten Land had to go and give me freaking whiplash. Because in the last level, 
suddenly there was like so much story. I'm not going to show you any of it for spoilers, but, but it was literally like a full blown story with voice acting and multiple characters and cutscenes. It became a full on Kirby anime. It was sick and easily the best part of the game. Hey, Next time, how laboratories do do that? Do that for the whole game. <laughs> My phone's ringing. Sorry, two seconds. Oh, sand dude. Hey man. Dude, oh, you're such a fake Kirby fan. I can't handle this anymore. Like, okay, for the uninformed out there, sure, you didn't see this coming. Oh man, the game is so cute up until this point, and then it gets crazy. Wow, what a shocker! You played Star Allies. That game did right. it too. Like, okay, okay. This whole Fight God at the end of the adventure thing has been a thing basically since the beginning. Oh, that's normal for Kirby? Not out of character at all for the for the end of the game to be completely insane. No, not at all, actually. If anything, it's one of Kirby's defining traits. So can you explain any of it to oh me? My God, dude. Okay, so like, there's Dark Matter, right? Which started off all the way back in Dreamland 2. It was this dark, creepy, sinister being that was taken over Dreamland. Sorry, guys. I got to He's not going to shut up. I shouldn't have asked him about Kirby. Yeah, Dreamland 3, it's right. crazy. Yeah, I got it. It turns into like a giant bleeding eyeball. Oh, okay. Absolutely bonkers. But then you like fast forward to Star Allies with the fully terminal. Yeah. This other creepy final boss thing. Wow. And it's like, oh, it's like kind of related to Dark Matter, but also the Harbinger no of Dark way. Matter this entire time. Uh -huh. It's crazy. If I were to yeah. go into the deep lore behind Void Terminal, uh, we would be here all day. Yeah, I think him making dinner. So. And, and don't even get me started on butterflies. Oh my god. 